About a month ago, GitHub published a short announcement saying that they are rolling out a new model in GitHub Copilot called Raptor Mini, available in public preview. The announcement itself was very brief. There were no public benchmarks, no model card, and no detailed explanation on how this model compares to other Copilot models. GitHub mostly confirmed that it now exists and that you can select it inside Copilot if you have access to it. So I tried using Raptor Mini on my own to build a little space satellite dashboard demo and it actually blew me away on how fast and performative it was. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at Raptor Mini see what kind of information we can gather about it around the web. And lastly, I will show you how I created this little cool demo using this model and give you my honest feedback. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's dive into it. So on November 10, there was an official announcement published by GitHub saying that Raptor Mini is rolling out in public preview for GitHub Copilot and you can now select it as a model from the model dropdown. And if you're using Copilot, I'm sure by now you have gotten access to it as well. And the cool thing is that since it's in preview mode right now, for the time being on the paid plan, you can actually use it for free without the quota multiplier or with a multiplier of one if you're using the free version. In terms of publicly available information, we do know that it is a GPT-5 mini model fine-tuned for general purpose coding and writing, which excels at fast, accurate code completions and explanations, and it also supports agent mode. Well, it supports all Copilot modes, really. Microsoft did actually publish a podcast episode recently featuring Julia Casper, one of the members working on the VS Code team, where she explained what this model is good at. So keep in mind it's mini. So it is optimized for speed. It is optimized for sm smaller tasks, things that are not as complex, where you might want to use um, any of the other models like Claude um, or whatever like you feel like is a bigger model series, right? Another important point to mention is that it has a very big context window, around 264,000 tokens, and also a big output window of 64,000 tokens. For a model that calls itself Mini, that is quite huge. And also, we got an answer as to why it's called Raptor Mini. I wish I had a fun, cool story, but it's a code name. Okay. Um, and we wanted it to be part of the bird group. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so, yeah, working with marketing, they wanted it to be mysterious, but um, part of like an animal. So although Julia said this model might be more suited for smaller tasks, I still wanted to push the boundary and see if this model can actually create a full web app from scratch. So I found this cool website called n2yo.com where you can sign up for a free API which gives you information about different satellite locations across the globe. And for this demo, I decided to prompt Raptor Mini to create a little space dashboard that displays and updates these satellite locations in real time. So I prepared a little instructions file telling it how to create the web app that tracks the positions of the International Space Station and also a bunch of random cherry-picked Starlink satellites. I also included a markdown file containing the docs on how to use the N2YO API. And lastly, since this model also supports edit mode, I am able to provide it with images of what the design should look like. So I went to the Figma's community page and I found this cool design of a space dashboard so I decided to feed that image to our model and see how well it can replicate it. So with all that information provided, I asked Raptor Mini to execute the task and the speed just blew me away. It took the model just 45 seconds to complete the entire task. As for the demo itself, we did get that bluish color scheme as provided in the sample design image and we did get the satellites updating the positions and moving in real time but it did not render a world map or a globe, so I have no idea if these position placements are actually accurate. So then I proceeded to provide it with an SVG map of the world, and it did manage to overlay the satellite positions on top of it. So this looks cool already, but I wanted to take it a step further and get it to design a 3D globe. So I decided to prompt it to use 3JS and convert the map into a 3D globe and position the satellites in 3D space. So at this point, it did take a little back and forth tweaking it to get it right and fixing minor bugs. But by the prompt attempt number seven or eight, I finally got the desired result and the dashboard just 
looked absolutely gorgeous. You can rotate the globe, you can zoom in and zoom out and you can see different satellite positions and they're all updating in real time. In terms of the code, we can see that it decided to use a simple express server on the back end and a simple vanilla JavaScript file for the front end, which is about 500 lines of code and also a very simple plain CSS file. And all of that is rendered onto a simple HTML file and served from that same express server as well, which I do not hate, honestly. I mean, if the goal is simplicity, I do like the fact that Raptor Mini chose to make it a very simple app rather than trying to spin up a complicated Next.js project with a very complicated dependency tree that usually leads to several build issues. So for a proof of concept, I think this is a very solid, good looking space dashboard. So honestly, I'm quite impressed with the quality that the Raptor Mini was able to produce but more than that, I was blown away by the speed of this model. It really feels very, very fast when you use it. Too bad we don't have official benchmarks yet to confirm it, but I'm actually excited now to try out the model's official release when it finally comes out. But until then, you can try out Raptor Mini on your own and let me know your thoughts. Do you like it? Will you use it? Let us know in the comments down below. And folks, if you like these types of AI model breakdowns, let us know by smashing that like button underneath the video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. This has been Andres from Better Stack, and I will see you in the next videos.